If you are in a relationship or are getting out of a relationship with a covert narcissist, narcissist or toxic man, listen to this. I have so much tea to spill. So I've been no contact with my toxic man for four weeks and doing really well. But for the most part, I have felt so much more high vibe. I have felt so much love around me. I have stepped back into my power, feeling like I deserve love, that I deserve healthy love. I have friends in my life. I have attracted so much more love now that I have canceled out that soul-sucking, low-vibe energy that the narcissist surrounds you with. And through their antics, you feel insecure. You always feel confused. You feel small. You no longer see the amazing things about yourself. And I was in that for an entire year. And what's so insidious about that mindset and that energy is it's such a slow burn that you don't even realize when you're in it. We had been no contact. I was totally vibing. I was feeling myself. He hadn't really tried to reach out that I know of. So I was feeling really, really good. And I was feeling like I was finally moving on. You know, my birthday. My birthday was yesterday. Now, if you've been with a narcissistic, toxic person, you know that your birthday is the time of year that they most want to get at you. They most want to punish you. Last year on my birthday, he broke up with me two days before my birthday or a day before my birthday. So I was going through a heartbreak on my birthday. So I don't know why I thought this year would be any different. I get an email from him. Now, let me preface this by saying I had received two to three emails from him over the last week. He got a new email address and emailed me from that email address. Therefore, it wasn't blocked. And I got emails basically with him stating that he didn't give me his consent to talk about him here on TikTok. So obviously he had watched some of my videos and the rest of the, the emails were basically him excusing his behavior, gaslighting me for my responses, gaslighting me for my version of events, basically putting all of it on me, projecting on me that I had done no work on myself, that I was anxiously attached and unstable. And that's what led to the breakup projecting because really he's done no growth on himself. And so the projection was him realizing he hadn't done any, saying I hadn't done any, gaslighting my version of events, trying to re recreate a completely different version of events. Um, all of the covert tactics were in his emails. And it's funny once you start to recognize those tactics and learn when you're away from them, you can then, when they come back, look at it so clearly and see it for what it is. He can take no responsibility for himself. And this is the point I want to make about being with a covert narcissist. You often will excuse them and think that they don't apply and they don't apply to certain aspects of the narcissism because you for so long have gaslit yourself in the relationship with them and they've gaslit you that when you're out of it and you're doing research on narcissism, you don't want to apply those qualities to him because you don't believe yourself. You don't trust yourself. And he has convinced you for so long that his mask is real. So I was kind of in that mode of like recognizing he was toxic and seeing some of the things he did. But over the last few weeks, kind of doubting myself, kind of letting that self-doubt and self-gaslighting come into play. Well, all I needed was these last email interactions with him to recognize even more clearly that he is a textbook toxic covert narcissist and that I'm not going to doubt it anymore. Because after these three emails where he literally changed the reality of our relationship and took zero responsibility... I was very non-communicative. I did not really respond. And then I let a couple days go by. And yesterday I get another email from him. So this will be four emails in a period of two days where we've been no contact, which in my opinion is love bombing. That in my opinion is him trying to reach out over and over again and wear me down so that he can have access to me again.
And I don't know if it's because his other supply ran out. I don't know if it's because he missed me or, you know, missed the hit, I should say, because he's not capable of actually missing who I was as a human or because it was my birthday and he had to ruin my birthday. It had to be all three of those things. Okay. Because I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt anymore. So yesterday on my birthday, he sends me another email and it must have been a last ditch effort to get me to respond to him because he finally apologizes. These guys will literally do anything, even if it means acting the fool and acting super fake and apologizing, even if they're not sorry at all, if that's what it takes to get you, if that's what it takes to get the hit of your presence in their life. So he apologizes to me. And so what does that do to me? That softens me a little bit because I'm like, oh, before I could easily ignore him and just write him off because he was taking no responsibility and he was being toxic. But now he's apologizing to me. So the human side of me that is a real person and not a toxic robot says, oh, okay, I'm being mean. I'm being rude. Here it is my birthday. Okay. Not once did he say happy birthday in that email. It was just him apologizing. So in my, you know, I'm a nice person. I get sucked in, which is why I was with this man for 12 months. I'm like, oh, you know, I've been ignoring him. I've been, so I'm going to respond. So I respond with this lovely voice message on my birthday at a work event. I go into my office and I record a message for him. And I say, I really appreciate your apology. I just want you to know that I, I wish the best for you. I am not interested in moving forward in a relationship. I've moved past that, but I wish you the best. I want you to find love. At the end of the day, you deserve that. You have a great capacity to love. I hope that you continue healing because he had said in his last email to me that he was going to work on healing. So that gave me hope, right? So I say, not hope to be with him, but just hope that he wasn't a monster. So then I say, you know, like, I wish you the very best. He responds back. The gist of these messages is the reason why I behaved the way I did on our last few months together is because I was ready to break up with you and I was not in it anymore. And so it's not that I was a toxic narcissistic person like you want to say I am out here, but it's because I was already not feeling the relationship and was going to discard you. That's what he leaves to me on my birthday as his last and final goodbye. So I'm going to be totally honest. I was sad on my birthday. I was sad. And if he's listening to this, he's going to love it. Like mission accomplished. Yay. You got what you wanted. I was sad on my birthday and I, I sat in the emotions and just realized like, wow, I feel sad right now. I feel rejected again on my birthday. He took the, the opportunity that he that he disguised as an olive branch and he disguised as him changing and being a good person to it's one more, one more opportunity to deny you one more opportunity to devalue you one more opportunity to remind you that I didn't want you and that I discarded you. I'm just being easy on myself, you know, because I did that because I'm a good person. My reasoning for reaching out to him is because I'm a nice person, unlike him. And he is not a nice person. He is not able to truly love somebody, to truly connect with somebody. And I am done protecting him. I just want to point out the point of this whole entire TikTok is just to say, don't believe them. Don't give them the benefit of the doubt because you're a nice person, because you believe in humanity. You believe that people at their core are good and that you believe in second chances because that is me. And I will say right now, people like this, do not deserve your love, your kindness, your, your generosity. They don't deserve the beautiful way that you look at life because they will take that way that you look at life and they will exploit it for their own selfish needs and gains. And just, you know what? This is a process. This breakup period where you're learning about them, it is a process. And give we need to give ourselves grace when we go back to them. We need to give ourselves grace as we get sucked back into their vortex of manipulation and we fall prey once again and we're mad at ourselves because it is a process. And the way they have operated in the world has been so toxic and hurtful and destructive that we can't even imagine treating other humans that way. So end of story, I'm actually glad that I got duped again because it just reminds me that I am not the problem and I am not a bad person. He has 
perfected this art of manipulating to get his needs met. And I'm not familiar with that because I don't do that to people.